All right, all right. Look, we got the women's 200 meter dash final over here in Bermuda tomorrow. Look, we got Beer Johnson. We got Williams in there. Rematch against TT Terry. Every time they race against each other, I'm going to look at it as a rematch. In the 100 or the 200, both of them rematching forever in my head for now. Okay. TT Terry, Brianna Williams rematch. Camacho Quinn. I. I'm going to leave my thoughts there. Desiree Bryant, we got that stretching over there from the Bahamas. And we got Shannon Ray. I'm not actually familiar with Shannon Ray, to be honest. Uh, that's the only person in this field I'm not familiar with. Somebody tell me who that is, if you recognize her. But look, we about to get into that in a second. All right. Y'all already know that you're watching Head & Shoulders ATR, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. And don't forget to bless. Leave a blessing. On that like button subscribe and don't forget do not forget to share we don't want you looking in the, the video like this okay we don't want you looking at it like this instead we want you to be coming in like yo share that button share 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 that's the most important thing so we got Camacho Quinn we got TT Terry that's up in here okay and then of course we got Brianna Williams so I want to focus a lot of this video on Williams here Okay, uh, a little bit more than that. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a uh, Brianna Williams bias. We got to put some respect on her name. Okay, I remember when I was reading World Athletics headlines and everything, and she's not really one of the people that they were using as a headliner. I'm like, look, she's 20 years old. She's got a gold medal, albeit as part of the relay, but still she's got a gold medal, 20 years old. I think she might be the youngest one in the field that got a gold medal. Uh, it's almost guaranteed at this point for the time being that she's going to be the youngest in the field that has gold in anything. So like she wasn't used as a headliner. She was just used as one of the other people that were there. Now, obviously, Camacho Quinn is going to overshadow her as far as an individual gold medal and how she did it compared to, you know, a relay gold medal. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I think she could have been used as one of the extra headliners. Jackson was used. You guys don't understand this unless you see the article here on World Athletics. Let me bring that up here in the background. So as you can see here, it says Noah Lyles, Jasmine Camacho, Quinn, Grant Holloway, and Sharika Jackson. Okay, cool. That's who they wanted to use. I think you could have used the fifth name there out of everybody else that I saw there. Yeah, I think that can happen. But hey, that's just me. Now look, let's get back to Brianna Williams real quick. And what I really want to say here on uh, Williams here, look, 20 years old, just barely had a birthday just a few weeks ago. What, two weeks ago? So she was 19 into 20. Still looking fresh-faced and everything. And she's an Olympic gold medalist. But here's a problem that I got here. I'm going to point that out real quick. At the end of her 100s, and sometimes, uh, and at the end of her 200s, she seems to be doing the little falling apart thing. And if you guys hear anything in the background here, like some papers or something rustling around. That's my rabbit coming around, rumbling through boxes and junk. So I'm not going to re-record this. That's just a feature here. So, yeah, I think that she's going to have a problem here in this race tomorrow at that last 50 meters. She's going to get out on Camacho Quinn, most likely. She's going to get out on the rest of the field, most likely. Uh, and I mean this 22 5, uh, 50. We got a major problem from what she ran last year, because if we go by her time last year at the end, at the best time. Oh, actually here progression. She only ran a 2285. If I am not mistaken, it was a 2282. So if that was the best that she could do last year on account of she might have got hurt or something like that, I think some of the reports were going out. But the end of last year, she ran a 2282. This is making me think that if she ended the season like that, albeit she just did have a PR in the 60, to be fair, I don't think that's going to translate good enough to the 200 to fight against Camacho Quinn. Reason being, look, let's look at the progression so far this year. So far this year. Oh, let me do a quick correction. She actually ran a 2348 last year. She ran a 2282 just uh, last week. Let me do that correction real quick. That was actually this year. 
where she ran that 2282. Last year, she ran a 2348. That's even worse. But she's opened up the season faster than she did. Like I said, based on this, I ain't thinking she taking down Camacho Quinn at all unless Camacho Quinn is going to drag her through. Here's the reason why. Looking at Camacho Quinn, she just ran a 22-27, albeit an entire, almost a month ago. So three weeks ago, Brianna Williams' 22-82 is fresher than this 22-27. But I got to say, uh, is Camacho Quinn, not knowing the, the wind and everything like that, is Camacho Quinn going to really drop from, like, I don't know. I guess she could go down to a 22-6. And then Brianna Williams could drop a 22-6 or something. It could be a close race. Because, you know, different people in the races result in different things. Brianna Williams gets a jump on her. It kind of spooks uh, Camacho Quinn. But I don't think that should spook her. Uh, Camacho Quinn has been beaten out of the blocks a few times. And she's obviously come through with the win in 100 hurdles. So I don't know if that's going to really affect her. Also, another thing, her legs might have the 100 hurdles in her legs. So that might affect her in the 200. Now, I don't think too much. Brianna Williams, this is what she got to work on. She got to work. Let me put her on the screen. She's going to have to work on the end of her race to get a little bit stronger. From what I've seen in most of her races, she kind of got a shaky uh, toward the end of the races. She got that strong. When she's on, she's on. I'm telling you, she's on, she's on. She's running through that line. She got her head kind of like dash for you see her forehead and everything is just going through the line and everything yeah when she's on she's on and when she don't got it it's just kind of like she's a little bit falling apart she's kind of struggling getting through to the line and everything like that and this being a 200 which is her weaker event by far i gotta say i'm not as confident with her getting the win now here's the thing with tt terry uh thrown in the mix here all right uh, I think this would be her opener. Yes, that is her opener this year. Now, she's done this uh, Texas Relays um, here, right here. And she was part of that relay. But being in an open, that's a little bit different. Looking at her progression from last year, being fair to everybody here. She ran a 22.54, which is her PR last year. So that's looking good. What is she going to open with? I think she might open with a 22.9 something, 23 flat-ish, looking close there. What do you guys think about that one? I think that's where it's more realistic to see there. Like I said, most of this video is focusing primarily on Brianna Williams, what she can do to improve, uh, things like that, because the way I look at it is Brianna Williams is a huge talent. Nobody can do that before people start claiming, oh, yeah, you only talk about representing Jamaicans. Man, get over it at this point. I talk about very good athletes. T.T. Terry is a very uh, good athlete. A uh, very good athlete. Camacho Quinn is killing it in the game. She's killing it with people that are technically faster than her, like Harrison. Like, she's beating her competition handedly um, with that. Right here. Harrison should have won that race, in my opinion. Look, you, you got to win that. I know she's just happy she didn't fall and everything like that. But in my opinion, she should have won the race. Nothing to be uh, downtrodden with uh, with not winning. But still, I think she should have won that race uh, from a, a biased perspective. Now, looking at Brianna Williams, this is what she got to work on. That finish, she's getting faster. Uh, Otto, I told y'all, I called it. She should stay with him and everything like that. And the fruits of that labor are pushing through now. She's got a gold medal as part of the relay. She's got a stack. She got the three fastest women in the world on the same country. What else can you do but be relegated to being on the relay? Okay, cool. Boom. Because the same three women made it in the 200. So what are you going to do when they took the spots in the 100 and the 200? What, run the 400 now? I mean, that ain't going to really do her that well, right? So she's the up and coming talent. Being 20 years old, Shelly Ann Frazier Price going to age out. That's what's just going to happen, right? Injury be damned. Anything like that. Shelly Ann Frazier Price ages out. Uh, Elaine Thompson Hero eventually is going to age out too. Assuming that let's just say they got the upper hand on her the entire time. Let's just say that they got the upper hand. Sharika Jackson, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get with Action Jackson sometimes. 
because she don't know how to finish her races, particularly in the 200. So if Williams could get better in the 200, that might be for Jamaica because, you know, you got international fame and international athletes that are really well in Boma and other athletes, too. So, yeah, you don't know what you got. She suffers from the uh, Talu disease where she doesn't necessarily finish. So when it comes to Williams, what do I look at her uh, going forward for this race? She's going to get a cold second, potentially third, depending on how T.T. Terry does and how Desiree Bryant uh, performs. I am not confident in T.T. Uh, T. Terry on this one. But this question mark about how Brianna Williams may finish some of the times, that's going to that's the question. But she's going to get out. I think she's going to be out the blocks harder and faster than everybody else in the field. I think that is no question. Oh, by the way, shout out anybody. Uh, if you guys know, um, here's something I got to point out here. So, you know, Bianca Knight, you know, the local world record holder and everything like that. So she's saying, oh, wait a minute. I got the wrong thing here. She was talking about um, uh, hosting a meet and she's looking for more Jamaican athletes in there she said i wish i had a, a a plug in jamaica and i'd love to have some of their high school kids over here to run with us outside of the pin relays she's hosting a meet here called the mississippi meet of champions so if you guys know any high schoolers because i know some of y'all y'all cousins to some of these athletes that are actually running at the uh world youth world juniors and everything like that hey look if you know this Try to get some of them to run here at the Mississippi Meet of Champions. I'm doing a shout out to her. It was not a paid sponsorship or nothing. I saw this tweet. I said, look, I got a sizable Jamaican audience here. Uh, I'm about to cover Brianna Williams. Here you go. It is the second annual Mississippi Meet of Champions, Saturday, May 11th at Pearl High School. Y'all go ahead and go check that out. You see the URL at the top. Go follow Bianca Knight. She over here trying to get more competition between the USA and Jamaica. She want to see some fast athletes. I want to see fast athletes. I think I'll actually do some coverage on this. Like I told you guys, I'm going to cover the Jamaican championships. If I do that, that means I'm going to, by definition, have to cover the USATF uh, nationals and everything like that, or AAU, one or both. So yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, put this word, share this video, share this portion of the video, tell them to come in at 11 minutes or something like that 12 share that let me get back uh here real quick and also it wouldn't be right this is a commercial non-commercial break here look trackstars.io we got the nfts this helps support the channel and like i said if we get these out and we get these down pat right here it starts tuesday april 12th you'll be you'll see a link up here that'll buy there approximately about 150 dollars up or down maybe 20 in either direction for one uh we got a raffle that's going out that to those people, there you go. One of 10 that can go and get a uh, a ticket to the women's or men's 100 meter dash final. I know a lot of you guys care more about that, but it's also the long jump final, shot put final on either one of those days as well. But yeah, we got that on day two or three even. If you turn it down, look, you go ahead and get yourself a thousand dollars if you turn it down because look it's a thousand dollars a night for the uh, hotel fees you say hey you don't want to cover the plane ticket we just giving you the ticket go ahead you accept uh that then we got if you get more than one either two or four you get entered into a two thousand dollar drawing or a four thousand dollar drawing i mean i'm sorry a ten thousand dollar drawing but go here go here last thing i'm gonna mention here and it has nothing to do with the track stars nfts necessarily but remember that ranking system that I came up with? We're using it here. It's Obsidian. Instead of being labeled champion, it's going to be Obsidian, Platinum, no Platinum Plus anymore, Platinum, Gold, Silver, and Bronze label. And we're going to come out with the exact definitions edited from last year onto this. Let's get back to Brianna Williams real quick. Now, look, Williams, I think she's got that potential right there. Uh, to win, but it's really unrealistic. We got to be real here. Look, season best, 22, uh, 82, 22, 27. That's going to be hard to run uh, against. Uh, Shannon Ray over here got a PR and her season's best, a 22, 95. Who knows? She might jump, and, uh, jump a little bit more. I really doubt it, especially being in lane eight. Uh, Strachan, I don't. Uh, I don't know what she's actually going to do here. Looking at her past races and looking at what I believe that she can do, she's probably going to be at the 22, 9, 
23-1 range, up in there somewhere. That's what I would think that she will open up her season with in the outdoor 200. And then uh, as far as Desiree Bryant, obviously she's run a 23-18. That's a whole second off her PR. She'll improve a little bit. Uh, from week to week, she may improve a little bit, but I don't think she has a contention. That's why I said one, two is going to go Jasmine Camacho Quinn and then Brianna Williams. Here's the question mark here. Camacho Quinn, just a few hours earlier, she's going to be running in the 110 hurdles. I mean, the 100 hurdles. Will that tire her out? I don't really think so. She might even be able to jog on the rest of them and still be able to come out pretty well. I doubt that's what she's going to do, but she might be able to do something like that. Hopefully the video wasn't paused and I unpaused it at the wrong time. That would be horrible. But look, let's look at the women's uh, 100 right here as well. We don't got a Camacho Quinn in here, so we don't really have to worry about that. I'm going to do the next video, then upload that later. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree uh, with what I said about Brianna Williams, uh, T.T. Terry, Jasmine Camacho Quinn? Are y'all going to be checking out Bianca Knight's Mississippi Meet of Champions? Because look, she, she wants some people to come over from Jamaica and show it a real... Uh, a real good showing. Now, obviously, this is after the Jamaican Championships, so it's going to be a lot of people cooling down off of that. It may not be some people uh, actually there, but hey, look, it's it might be people that won't be trying to, you know, go to the uh, uh, Junior Championships or the trials or anything that's happening in Jamaica because some people said, yeah, May is probably not a good month, but in the U.S., May is uh, usually closer to their championships and everything like that. So that's where it kind of matches up. This would be a good show. And uh, by the way, salute to you all. I will catch you all on the next one. You've been watching Head & Shoulders ATR, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. Peace out.